to episode 18 of the monkey business show i'm back <laughs> so how was one week without me it was good i mean i'm sure this was better than bahamas so you know yeah yeah uh, uh, you're lost well today to elevate the podcast we brought an incredible uh, guest with us uh what's up celery how are you doing my friend oh well, hello yeah thanks for having me doing pretty decent that's amazing well today you're gonna be a little bit of a uh, clusterfuck or, or hectic podcast because I was not here last week. Uh, we have a lot of things that we haven't told the world that you are going to hear for the first time. But obviously, we want to start with you. You know, I've never met you before, but you guys are playing amazing like bosses. So, yeah, tell me, I don't know, how are you guys feeling as a team right now? Yeah, nice to meet you. I mean, we're feeling pretty good. Just gave off some nice losses before this podcast, but besides that, we're doing pretty good so far. So yeah, should be, I can be. I'm pretty happy. Okay. So Johan, Seb, have you guys ever interacted, been in a team together, or you have fun pub stories or, or beef of any kind? How do we spice this conversation from the beginning? I don't think there's beef, as far as I know. I'm sorry if I have. No. Well, there's no beef. We never at really all. talked. I think. Period. Beef at all. The the vegans. Oh, there. <laughs> ah, you see what Damn, I did there. How right? long have you been sitting on this? You've been. You wake up this morning and you're like, "Oh, they're gonna laugh at this. They're all gonna love it." A whole page of jokes <laughs> for you. Whole page. There's like three there, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, there is no beef between you guys, but you guys are aware of each other, or are you. I have to figure out how to frame this conversation so yeah. we get something yeah, I, really I, I heard of OG before. <laughs> you heard of it. That's good. No, I mean, I could say there's, um, I think, at least from our side, there's always been a good, like a very high amount of respect when we see good Dota and, and we understand that people play good Dota. Um, I think we're one of the teams that don't underestimate. And for the past two seasons, it's, I would say Celery has definitely been on the radar. Um, like as in we've had to play <laughs> as well so more than that um but yeah now as you now as we all see is i don't know i really love the gaming gladiators dota i think it's fresh as well it's like unique it has it also has that ace touch to it um <clears throat> yeah i don't know there's only i would say only respect not no no beef but we then <laughs> don't fucking crack that vegan joke again please <laughs> 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 I'm trying. I'm trying so hard to hold it back. Um, but yeah, no, I. I think it's funny. You guys have. You are. Uh, you're not the only vegan on your team, right? Oh, you are the I only am. vegan on your team. Okay. Yeah, I mean, his name is Tofu of my other support, but that's just. Yeah, his yeah. Name. No, I thought. Okay, I thought he was true. also a uh, vegetarian or vegan because I was vegetarian for a while, and Tommy is still here, is still vegan. Um, and yeah, I think and Alan also turning turning vegan slowly. I'm also going back on the veggie train, but uh, yeah, I don't know if that's where we should start the conversation about our eating habits, <laughs> but there's a lot of respect, uh, at least from my side, a ton of respect, um, both for Celery and Gigi, so no beef. I would say Celery, if you have not seen our podcast, we are fanboys of you guys, especially we've been talking about you guys for a long time, because like Johan said, you know, like at the end of the day, this company is Johan's and Sepp's company, so we are all lovers of Dota. And what you guys are doing is super cool. So I would like to, you know, more know about your dynamics. How do you guys come with the ideas? You know, don't, I don't want to get you into trouble. Things that you feel comfortable talking about, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Especially which are the draws for the major. Like, you know, <laughs> the classic things. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I would be able to tell you, but the patch just hit. So okay. who knows? What do you think of that? What do you think of the patch? I mean, I see a lot of complaints about the current patch, but I think it's a pretty good patch so far, to be honest. Oh, I mean, they did ruin my enchanters a little bit. It's a little bit sad. Enchanter hit really hard, harder than most, right? But it, <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. Yeah. Besides that, some pretty cool changes. Some X nerf, the classic. I mean, I do some very. I think there was room for that. What they did, like a lot of like nerfing. I think there's there was a bit of room. 
because for the X nerve? No, I'm not necessarily the X nerve. <laughs> just in general, like hero nerves, and then they did buff a few as well uh, with it. But not often in Dota you see like uh, a patch so focused on nerfing. And I guess I, th I mean definitely Lizard Man needed nerf. Um, I would say like the most hyped uh, played heroes always could. You could always change things up or just buff the heroes that aren't being played as well. I, I would say Ench, I've seen Ench now since 2016, more or less constantly. <laughs> so I think it's okay if yeah. they nerf her a little bit, put her on your shelf. Yeah, I, th I think the most of the nerfs seem very reasonable. Yeah, uh, the Axe one does not, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, and there's some Omni Knight as yeah, well. Yeah. Like, leave this guy I don't know, I don't know either. Sometimes they just destroy heroes. I was very, I, I actually saw the Omni Knight. I was like, really? It's like Omni Knight dominating enough that we have to nerf it? Is that the hero <laughs> that is breaking Dota? Well, I do think they actually balance a lot uh, just on lower brackets too. Okay. Be because you have um, the Arc Warden nerf did not come from high tier Dota. It was barely touched, barely played. And they hit him with like, of course, changes on top of the 50% reduced damage on ulti. Um, but I, I, in Herald, I think the hero was really high win rate um, or like the lower, I say Herald, like it's the only one, but like the lower tiers. Um, <laughs> it's all Herald to me. <laughs> you should go uh, one step down and Herald. Johan, as the only Herald in this conversation, <laughs> I can tell you, we don't have the micro skills to pull our warden. All right. So I don't know who's picking that hero in Herald. There are some bracket somewhere lower that apparently was taking great joy of Arc Warden and some <laughs> other heroes like Omni probably still. This is probably the only reason he gets nerfed. Um, at least that's the, that's the explanation I have for a lot of the hero changes throughout okay. time. But sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. So, Celery, I how long have you been captain uh, a team? Um, and I always find this interesting. This this captain term. It's like I've been drafting for certain teams for for like four years, but like like in recent years since I've been working with with Immortal Faith, my coach, I'm not sure if I'm really the captain. It's like if a captain also drafts, then I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I'm more of a player. Okay. Like maybe out of game, I have a certain personality that would fit for it. But as a, I mean, I guess it depends per team how how you should see it. So how is the dynamic of your team? Who is, for example, like the in-game leader versus the the leadership outside of the game, and you know, like the moral leader? Yeah, I mean, may maybe I'm a bit of a moral leader, but then. In, in drafts, it's like mostly our coach. We just have input, but we don't make the drafts. And then in the game, I wouldn't say we have an in-game leader. Like sometimes I talk a bit too much, so maybe I'm the in-game leader then. But uh, <laughs> I think now I'm not sure if this is true for every team, but I think nowadays you cannot have one person calling everything in a game. You need everyone to communicate their things. I'm not going to tell my Ursa, probably, it's probably time to go Roche. You need everyone to like do their part in the communication. Because everyone should be the best at their their own role. Would you say that all your teammates are uh, good at communicating, or some are excellent and some are less? <laughs> uh, sometimes we're better, sometimes we're worse. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's it's always a it's a hard process. Yeah, I was it. I think. <clears throat> Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Johan. I was just going to say the situation of OG, uh, the guy's communication is very funny too. Like the dynamic, nothing I've seen. Some of the things I haven't really seen much before and some of the things, of course, I've seen before and, and, and are really cool and really awesome. But yeah, I guess I feel old. I feel old. Sometimes when the young <laughs> guys talk to each other, I'm like, bro, like no way that would fly with me. <laughs> but yeah. It's, it's good communication though that they have. I, I You're talking in Twitch emotes, so what what makes you feel old? No, no, just the way they kind of like, I don't know, talk to each other. I'm, I feel like I'm so professional now, and I use the word professional as in, I do feel like when I go play Dota, I want also like very crystal clear uh, communication for the most part. A couple of jokes is good, and and all that, and and a little bit of banter and a little bit of like friendly flaming is good. But there's a lot of like banter, jokes, and friendly flaming all at once. And sometimes, I mean, I, I do think it's it's to a fault as well. I think once you have really good teams that are really focused, these things only come very, uh, 
briefly in games because yeah once you're really good and you're talking about the right things you don't have much time to you know lighten the mood and, and try to create a better atmosphere the atmosphere should be good and people should be saying like a lot of the good things and stuff i think these guys are very young and still trying to feel out also the uh, fill out the void and make it make it feel like you know everybody's having fun all the time and then sometimes it just ends up being a lot yeah yeah that makes sense i mean you you gotta have a balance for sure you need some jokes here and there yeah you can't flood the communication. I would say, <laughs> I would say, Johan, maybe the last version of the roster for the last two years, you guys were, you you guys have a different relationship with each other, and the games felt very organized and structured, you know. And I think that, like, maybe that's where you say professional, and maybe corporate in a way. The communication was efficient. There was nothing else you guys discussed it because you were, yeah, you both, all of you guys had your own lives outside of the game. But you know, when you bring players that are 16, I don't know how deep your life is outside of the game when all you do is play 15 hours a day. Yeah, maybe a bit of that, but also I think we knew each other for four years. Uh, you run out of jokes at some point and it's like, <laughs> you gotta go to back to talking about something useful. No, but I think it is also, also a, when you're a new team kind of um, phenomenon, right? Like once you, on, because you also don't know each other very like as well, you're still figuring it out. But yeah, I have my definitely my view of, of how Dota communication should should look like. Um, I, I'm very curious about how each team kind of approaches it. Some teams I don't think talk about it very much, and they just find it naturally. How about you guys for gaming gladiators? How do you guys approach communication? Uh, yeah, we we talk about it a lot. Uh, we also talk about this cluttering the communication or the comps. It's really bad when this happens, but. Uh, I think it's not so bad if it's positive and some jokes here and there. Yeah. Because that brightens the mood. But sometimes you can also have, like, someone has a rough game or a rough day and you can hear it. That's probably the worst thing <laughs> that can happen. Yeah. Probably everyone has done this at some point. But this just, it doesn't, not only you're having a bad game now, now everyone is having a bad game. Yeah. You feel like I have to make up for this guy. Like, th this person has a bad game, now I need to step it up or, like, do some crazy stuff to make up for him. Maybe he's tilted or whatever. Like compensation, that... compensation, right? Like, overcompensating. Yeah. yeah. You try to do, like, you try to do 200%. And that, that, that doesn't work, of course. But besides that, I think communication is very important, like, for everything, for for the entire game, basically. You need to communicate with each other what... The things that for you are simple from your perspective, because it's only simple for you for, for when you're playing the game. Like if you're a carry, you have to communicate when you're ready. What what are what are we waiting for? What are, what are we doing? Like maybe it's clear to you, but I think this is very important to share everything. Unless you're all, if you all like understand everything perfectly, maybe you don't have to do this. But that's the dream. I think if you do this, you can get like a better baseline. It's a fine balance, I would say, because you also can't explain too many things inside the game, right? Sometimes if there's like a, a thing that you have to make people understand, but it's like maybe more complex than I need BKB for this fight, you start spending time trying to explain it in the game. This is already a bad, a bad sign because you're, if you don't know already, like some of these things, you, you won't learn it in this game, you know, you'll, you'll probably learn in the replay. <laughs> you'll probably learn it maybe losing. You'll get ready for the next game, but quite often when I hear people like elaborate on, on certain plays, I'm like, oh shit, you know, this will be wild. It's like, I X, you arrow and this guy can die. You have to kill him before BKB and this and that. And it's like, well, okay. I'm sure everyone heard, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a bit too hard, but yeah, I think the simple, this, even just the simple things, like sometimes it's hard to say it all, but when you say it, I think it helps a lot for the, the overall gameplay if you find a way to say things simply it's that's a gift i think it's a great gift to have if you're good with words and you're able to say things very briefly yeah. shortly and, and make money many people understand that's a that's a really good gift to have in especially in, in dota yeah, but what you mentioned like in terms of gameplay or like concepts that you have in the game like you're not gonna explain these in the game like you already know it beforehand some people try or... <laughs> i've heard people <laughs> try shit like oh my god oh Johan has been watching our screams lately. <laughs> yeah, that too, that too. I mean, Dota is a complex game, constantly new shit, and yeah, people also get very excited wanting to get shit done. 
and then yeah it's like wow some things are very complex i'm also seeing things i've never seen before i mean people are figuring out this patch as well like um the storm with null talismans is still around and <laughs> there's like all kinds of shit that i i never understood like it's actually new to me um <laughs> i would have probably had to tank the loss if i didn't get a replay before i have a question for you guys so it's always been and i don't have an answer eh? i would love to hear the discourse between both of you I've always think that if you have a coach that is doing your drafting, then how do you communicate some of those concepts into the game? You know, that's why I do like the captain drafting and then he's in the game and he knows how to, hey, we're going to do this and this and this. Otherwise, if you're drafting without really being able to be in game, do you feel that that is something that could hinder you? I, th I think it can, but at the same, we're not like during these drafts, I would say it's more about execution of the draft. Where it's not that we end up with a draft where I think, whoa, I've never seen this. Like, what are the, what okay. is, what is this combination of heroes? Like, I, let's say there's like ten different things we can end up with, and some games will end up with number eight, draft number eight, sometimes with four. We already, we all know these drafts and how they're supposed to be played. But there's also this thing in drafting where you're you're drafting against a different team and like, what is the best to pick now? What is the best to ban? This is like the execution part of the draft, where whatever we end up with, we already understand how this works. Maybe there's like one different last pick, but we can briefly talk about it. And so I, I don't think you should, if you end up with like completely new draft, then it, it's probably hard. But if you already understand what can happen, then I don't think it matters too much. Johan, how do you see this? I think it's pretty good if you have the right coach, if he could draft, because there's already a lot of responsibility on every player who plays the game. And the five also has a lot of responsibility, especially now. It's like uh, back in the day, you could probably get away with losing lanes more, get away with like having the bigger overview while sacrificing a bit of gameplay. But I would say having a coach, helping with the draft, helping like getting the team on board an idea so that a player doesn't have to do it is greatly beneficial. I think, I think LGD were one of the first teams to have a coach that would like fully handle the drafts and they would just sit down and play type deal. Um, I see, yeah, I see the same downside that if, you, if you're a team that's going for something new and you don't have like a, a dynamic where somebody helps kind of make this new thing get executed, well, I'm not, I don't think you should have that just because you don't have the drafts you're sitting in the game. But if you don't build that dynamic, then yeah, I, I do think you can then be at a fault. But like what Salary is also saying is that when, you are, when you're more established as a team, when you've played together and you decide on your box of heroes or whatever, it, it does get, at least for me, it was great alleviation to have the coach there and the coach helping slash taking over the drafts. Um, so that I could focus on playing. And that was just for TI-10. Uh, I would say, for, yeah, for TI-9 and TI-8, I was still doing it you know, mostly with the team, but Seb and me were also doing like a lot of it together. And I don't think it's healthy for one person to, it's like old school way of thinking. It's like, yeah, one dude, one dude draft, one dude captain. And if shit goes south in the game, it's like, everybody's gonna wait for this one guy to talk. That's not good. That's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's very old school and uh, it's outdated. Um, now people do have to step up in, yeah, like Salary is saying, you have to step up, you have to know your role, you have to know your shit. And if you're going to be a silent player from start to end, I don't think it's good enough for, for any, any high level tournament. Okay. So my follow-up question would be for you, Salary, who is the more quiet part of the person of your team or who is the most outspoken? Who, how is the dynamic of voices in, or the funnier guy in the team? Uh, that, that's a lot of things. I mean, uh... The funniest it's pro it's probably Diracho. I think he's very funny. Maybe he's also the sometimes a bit more quiet. But silent jokes. Something about <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Some something about the way like he'll just there's always jokes. Maybe it's more out of game than in game, but he, he just has jokes non stop. Like for watching replays for too long when we were at the boot camp. He'll just start he grabs my pen and he just starts clicking the pen next to me like he, he cannot take it it takes too long so <laughs> maybe for recent times i should say tofu is the most quiet because he keeps messing up his mic position so we cannot hear him oh and you don't have the position of the mic which is 
here. Every time he plays, it's over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but at least you can hear him. <laughs> so, sometimes I'm a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm probably the most outspoken usually because I, like, if there's if I feel the comms are not like quick enough, I wait like five or ten seconds, and then I think, okay, guys, it's taking too long. Like, I'm just gonna start calling now. But sometimes to to our detriment, sometimes it's beneficial. I we need spoke, to chill a bit on that sometimes. We spoke about this uh, several times in the podcast and before is that we used to have like the two lanes, you know, it was the Johan Anna lane and the Sepp and Jerax. And Sepp and Jerax were constantly talking, we're doing this, we're doing this. Oh, you pull this. Okay, I'm last hitting here. Okay, you pull this angle here. And then the Johan and, uh, and Anna were the cricket line. Crick, crick. I would talk. You have that Anna, too? Anna would not talk at all. Uh, it, was, it was insane. It was insane. But he was good. Like he understood things, but he could not communicate. Yeah. And I had one line that it was like, what is the OIPS or something that you didn't know what was going to happen? It was like a Pokemon. He used the same line for good things and bad things that are happening at the same time. Just sounds, <laughs> just sounds. You had to decipher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's the classic, right? Someone's getting ganked. And like afterwards they say, ah, I'm dead. Yeah. Could've, you could have just said something, man. I've, I've channeled, I have TP ready. Uh, 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 say something. Uh, uh. I appreciate when people just make like very um, like loud sounds and but also sounds that are very clear like if you're getting chased you do like the running away scream like ah! <laughs> or if you're going in it's like get in like ah! just you're just making sounds like Anna would also be a sound user only sounds almost it's like oh <laughs> oh ah like this one this one is like when you know it's either really bad or really close like <laughs> <laughs> uh, we sometimes have to cast a curse from from my teammates. We're like, oh no! This is mostly uh, mostly boom and direction to do this. They might be dead and during the team fight. They're like, oh, like it's close, and they're like, oh, it's like direction <laughs> oh, saying like, hit him, hit him one more time. Like, well, what is this? What is this comment? <laughs> oh, some backseat gaming. That's great. Uh, <laughs> So sometimes it's funny and sometimes it's like well, what is what is going on we would do like the valorant or csgo you know? one hp one hp and the guy is like 95 percent hp but everybody is always a one hp one hp one hp shoot there 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 not there there now nah, we can play some csgo we're, pr we're pretty decent i think are you Ooh, okay now this is fun we should do the og versus gaming gladiators in csgo uh, yeah i think we're the best uh, dota csgo team to be honest well, you're lucky that Anna is not here now, because Anna was very, very good, very, very good. Anna was good, but Seb was equally bad, and me. Like we, <laughs> uh, we, we could drag any team down, like any team uh, we could drag down. I've, I've, I've had to practice. I was, oh, I was not a player. <laughs> I got two hundred hours now. Now I feel oh, like a god. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> is that your to-go game when you guys are like resting or trying to have fun together? You play CS:GO. Uh, yeah. If we play as five, it's it's mostly CS:GO. And it's been getting more fun now that we're getting closer on skill. Because at first it was like anyone comes to me and I'm just dead. Okay. But now I can actually, Shoot I can back. have a bit of impact. Uh -huh. So <laughs> it's uh, it's nice. It's a it's a nice game to play for fun. You also have some different dynamics where you can see which player like when they die they say, "Oh, this guy's cheating," or like checking their profile, like. <laughs> Classic. Every time uh, they get a kill on you, you check their profile. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've also been called a cheater at this point. Oh. So I guess that that just happens a lot. I have two hundred hours, man. I had one good round. Cheater, man. Cheater, man. Uh, yeah. uh, that's good. That means you're doing good. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting how quick that happens. But I, I can also understand it in a shooter game. It's like. I guess that's a big difference with Dota, where like in C in Dota, you I never you never hear someone saying like "ah oh, cheater," like well, what is there to cheat? Uh, I have a few ideas you if always... you want, you know, <laughs> coaching games yeah. and you know. Yeah, I <laughs> guess, but in CS:GO, it's like you're you're fooling yourself, like mm -hmm. ah, is because you feel like you have to feel really good when you're playing this game, because it's all aim, and then when you die, it's like well. Like your ego kicks in, I guess. <laughs> I could only die to a computer. <laughs> uh, there's no way I lost this fight. Yeah. Johan, are the guys playing in CSGO right now or anything else? Or just Dota, Dota, Dota? No, no. Don't think, uh, so Misha play 
plays NBA 2K or like the basketball mm -hmm. with controller. Plays it like almost every night, I think, like a game or two. And it looks so lame. I gotta be honest. It looks so fucking lame. <laughs> like, so how do you shoot? And it's like, there's a little bit of timing, I guess. Like there's a bar that swings or something and then you, you, you have to time it and then it increase your chances of the shot hitting or, or you getting the dunk off and not getting defended, I guess. But yeah, it does just look so lame. Like there's also like not so high APM or maybe I'm just not, I'm used to more. Um, I haven't really seen other guys play anything. I'll be honest. Uh, maybe Artem has been playing something, but I don't see it. Yeah, and no BZM, just nerds, nerds Dota as well. Are you still playing Apex yourself? No, dude. I I haven't got I haven't gotten around to open any game these past couple of weeks. Plus, I've been sick this last week. I wish I got like a little more Elden Ring in. Oh, Elden Ring. Have you played that, Celery? No, I I haven't played it. Do you play Souls game? I've, I've been... I'm playing a game that's similar, I guess. I'm playing The Witcher. Oh, okay, nice. nice. Yeah, like of a similar I game. Play a lot of Elden Witcher. Ring. Very good game. But it's gonna take a while. Like I'm at eighty hours now. I don't even. Fa I'm not even close to halfway. I think. Uh, uh, that All the side quests, just walking around. That game is chill. Uh, I love that game. <laughs> when I played The Witcher, all I did was play the card game inside The Witcher. Yeah, that's the problem days. too. Yeah, uh, G went. They went. It's a great game. Went, actually, yeah. they did a. They spin it off and they did their own game. And I play a lot of that game mm -hmm. with PPD. PPD and I used to play that game. <laughs> I couldn't play the game actually. Like. I think I played too many card games in my life already. Like mm -hmm. this Gwent, I played one game and I'm like, oh, that's the shit. I don't wanna. <laughs> Not the rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah uh, I mean, you you played MTG? I guess Magic. Uh, no, I never... I played Pokemon, the card game. Oh, okay. You never played Magic. No. Oh, okay. No, I was I it's played Pokemon young, when I from like eight till ten. I played it. Uh. But I played it a lot. Like, I was pretty good at it. I went to the World Championship once when I was Really? There. That's awesome. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah, was interesting. But after that, I was I was super done with card games. It's like some national tournament. I feel like I played near perfect and I just lost. It's like, I didn't get anything. I'm like, what is this game? I mm. cannot take this anywhere. Like, <laughs> I mean, so. That's a curse of any pro card gamer, right? Like, that must be one of the most tilting things you can do in your life. Is <laughs> draw for your future. It's like... If I draw a good card, of course I win, you know, like if I draw something useless, oh man. And that's poker as well. There is an yeah, element of, course, of, of course. luck in poker. Are of you course, holding yeah. the nuts in every That's game, why you yeah. need such a, such a big volume in poker, right? Yeah. To equal it out. That's, a, that's like the annoying thing where you have this one national championship every year. It's like I need 10 of these and not one a year. And that's so the little. only reason true one is because he's lucky, not because he's good. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. So to give to give people an understanding a little bit of the card games that we're talking about, yeah, there is a massive factor of of playing. You know, if you know how to play, if you can play into your situations, but there's just an element of if you have better cards, you know. And there is a play called the nuts, where it's like you have the best play possible with the cards that are on the table, so you know that you won, like you know that you won. <laughs> so if you are a good player, you know that you hold the nuts. So I saw the the World Series of of poker. And yeah, the guy that ended up winning had many times the best cards on the table over and over and over. Uh, but yeah, he was also a great player, but he had the best cards. Streaks of luck in that game is crazy. If you get streaks of luck in poker, especially land poker, because you were also, I mean, obviously there's a blind system, which makes you pay, but you start getting the vibe that some dude playing really loose, but no, he's not playing loose. He's just fucking lucky. So it's like, well, how can you read the situation any any different or any better? It's like either he's fucking lucky, or he's playing really loose. You know, I'm gonna have to to play back. Like I'm gonna have to take my chance uh, that my cards are better. And then you face like, yeah, that's true in a nutshell when you play poker. Have you been playing poker with you? Is that the yeah, second time you play the reference? <clears throat> uh -huh. I got to finals once, so we played two games so far. We'll play again. It's fun though, fun. Funnier when you're Mystery lucky. Also, Mystery also likes poker a lot. When I was together with him in EG at night, we used to watch uh, some of the poker tournaments. I like the... I, I, was, I was watching it today, the current oh, tournament. Awesome. Where is it? Monte Carlo. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's fun to watch. Is that the World Poker Tour? Uh, it's EPT, European Poker Tour. Okay, okay. That's awesome. Is that something that you like? Obviously, if you play card games, 
it's, it's yeah. something fascinating for me is the card games like if you play one you know how to play all of them you know sort of yeah, you're gonna I, be good i like to play poker now and then i like tournaments the most but uh there's just not enough time usually for a tournament like even online if you go far it takes usually like at least six hours like that's way too much like, if i have a free day i'm not gonna play a tournament all day but it's nice to to watch sometimes that you can watch the tournament it's very slow and i just watch this tournament over on vaults for like 50 days every day i watch 10 minutes uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so i have i have something to watch for a very long time so what do you do for your free time uh do you like sports nature uh, pets i don't know what are you doing in your free time yeah, I mean, just uh, the usual things, I guess. I like to exercise. I like to be outside a lot. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I'm really a gamer. Besides Dota, like, there's not that many games that I feel like playing. Like, it's kind of interesting. Like, I have a lot of friends who would say are more gamers than me. It's interesting how that goes. Like, things that I enjoy to do mostly are just things outside. But I guess that also comes when you're inside so much. Mm. You don't want to be inside more. Like I'm already playing this game all the time. Like if I'm not playing, I want to just be outside, exercise, be with friends. And nothing too special. Do you live in the Netherlands right now? In which city? Yep. Don't, don't tell me your address. In the north. <laughs> in Groningen. Awesome. Did you grow up there? Yeah, the, the earthquake city. <laughs> earthquake city? Why is that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Groningen, there's a big gas field. Okay. Uh huh. So there's been a lot of gas been getting extracted. I think Cracking. that's the right word. Mm -hmm. So recently they stopped with it or are trying to stop, but there's still like the ground is still like moving a bit from it. Or like I'm not not sure how the natural it. gases are making the the ground shift. That's crazy. That sounds wild. Yeah. So where I live, far enough away that it's not too bad, but we had a few cracks in our house where they had to fix it. And now with, with the <laughs> with the with the war and all, like they might try, need to start getting more gas because we just need some more resources here in Europe. Energy. Yeah, so uh, we'll see uh, what happens. Maybe I'm not living here anymore in fifty years. Uh -huh. Are you gonna go to TwitchCon since it's in Amsterdam? No, nah, I don't know. I'm not really. Uh, what, what am I gonna do there? <laughs> I don't know. I've never gone to a TwitchCon. I was thinking about going to that one just for fun, just for the cringe. You know, it's like walking around in the Office episode. I went to one. Yeah, I, mean, I went to I, one I in LA know. and it was mostly... I, I don't know what I would do there. And the famous streamers and just being chased by people. It was, it was fun. A lot of... Uh... Oh, it's fine, you can... like, you're a popular yeah. streamer and walk behind him creepily, like, and try to get in the, in the frame and, like, be that dude. <laughs> That's what I want to do. You want to go to the hot tub section? Yeah. yeah they must have, like, a hot tub and pools <laughs> uh, department or... Uh, yeah, hot yeah, tub yeah. and SMR sections. Oh. Those are going to be very interesting. But I, I don't know. I like I like fiending mm -hmm. a bit, you know. I, and I don't know if any of the top streamers will will go to the Amsterdam TwitchCon. But if they do, I think it will be fun to to see. Not like they're my idols, but they're like they just seem like fun people. And maybe they want to be my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to do a better job and befriending uh, some of them. I, I think that our our days will be a little bit brighter if we had those kind of friends. <laughs> Yeah, probably. I mean, they seem like they have fun, you know. But I always wanted to go to TwitchCon, and I'm gonna go and probably go to the Amsterdam one. When is it? Let me see. Am it's I going? July six, I think. Uh, no, ju July sixteen. So we're going to on uh, June fourteenth to June eighteenth to Blast Lisbon. Oh yeah. The CS:GO team, because we're playing, and that would be great. Dude, have you, Celery? Have you ever been to a CS:GO event? They're awesome. I've never been to any event. Dota, CSGO. Oh, what? Dude, this is going to be your first run then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I never I never felt like going. I'm like, what am I going to do? I don't want to be a spectator. Like, I'm okay. just not go. Just, uh, <laughs> play, player or not at all. So how are you but feeling now with your first land? Yeah, it's going to be fun. And it feels a bit weird that it's the first land. Because I feel like I've mm -hmm. been doing pretty decent for quite a while now. But, you know, when there's no lands, it's hard to go to any lands. For like, uh, I mean, it's a bit weird, I guess. We st I feel like I started doing well exactly when Corona started. I was a bit unlucky. But it's exciting to finally go. Second land I've qualified for. Maybe this one will happen. I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm not getting my hopes up. I think I'm going to be flying out on Monday, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> it is happening. It's happening. 
Actually, I would like to thank the people from Gaming Gladiators have been messaging me and trying to help me because for the visas that you guys did for uh, Sirat, is it Sriracha? Sriracha. Yeah. I don't know. I always think Sriracha, the hot sauce, <laughs> but I know it's not the real name. So your celery tofu and Sriracha, <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> So, you just made a dish. It's a, when we when we try line, it's a fucking salad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it's like the celery, the tofu, and the sriracha. <laughs> the hot sauce. Yeah, I think about it every time, and I know it's not his not real name. But, uh, oh, I like that. I'm gonna call him Anton. This, this try line is hot. Yeah. <laughs> got a yeah, van. Got a van tree and bro. It's too much of a veggie. You can't give him a Anyway, so uh, going back to this, so you this is your first land. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, and then, what do you think? Who do you think is the best player in your team that is gonna? Who is the best, highest performance player? Do you think they will perform? Uh, I mean, I, I have to say Ace then, because he has the. We all don't really have LAN experience, and he has a lot. So if you're watching this Ace, you better pop off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, we'll have to see, right? For the rest of us, we'll just try our best, and maybe we'll be a bit pr more pressured at some point. Well, I'm sure we'll work for it, but Ace has a lot of experience in this, so that should help us as well. Just Lone Druid every game. Ace, Lone Druid. Lone Druid, Meepo, mm -hmm. Arc Warden. <laughs> yeah, Arc Warden. I wonder if it's good. I want to pop with it. <laughs> I'm not sure if that thing is back, but Ace heroes are always hype. Ace heroes are always hype. How is he transitioning to the new role? How do you think he did? I mean, obviously he's doing very well, you know, but I would like a little bit more insight from you. Um, yeah, I mean, I could talk a bit as well about how how we got together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with, I'd love uh, to. Five of us. So like um, during this roster shuffle after last TI, after TI-10, I was not sure if I was staying in Europe initially because I also got invited to boom esports but i ended up staying mm. in europe because oh. i wanted to play with my coach which was pr pretty risky when i think back to it because <laughs> we didn't have a roster it was only boom immortal faith and me but i felt like it was the right decision at the time uh, I, g I guess it worked out if i look back at it now and it was really hard to find players at first uh, derecho was the only person that wanted to play with us he messaged me he really wanted to play with us and then besides that, it was like, it was like, I don't know, <laughs> no, no one wanted to join. It was very hard to find players. And the two players that were interested the most, there were, there were some other people that were interested, were Tofu and Ace, but they also played Carry on 5. And at first I also, it was interesting, at first I didn't even want to play with Ace, because I felt that he was too experienced, or like he already achieved too much. And in my mind, I didn't know the person, but I felt, is he going to be able to work as hard as everyone else? Because we want to practice every day. Like, we're going to watch replays for three hours per day. Can he still do this? But it turned out that he's maybe even the most motivated. So I was completely incorrect on that. But it, it was an interesting period. Like, they, they just switched to offlane and position four, three and four. And I don't know, it's been going really good. The good thing about them is that they really like playing together as well. They'll play pubs together for six hours per day if they have to. They they just really like to lane together. So I think that helped a lot in their transition. Where was uh, Tofu playing before he joined you guys? Uh, he was playing together with Ace as well. He, they were playing on Hellbear Smashes. Okay, got you, got you. Uh, so they were already playing together, but in that team they were carry in position five. So they they've been playing together for a long time. Oh, yeah, that's really nice. Where does his nickname come from? Tofu. That's a good question. <laughs> maybe maybe you can invite him to the podcast. I have, I have no clue. Next time I'm gonna invite him. <laughs> that's the first thing I ask him. Like tofu. Uh, you can tweet it. I, I have no clue. Actually. It's <laughs> interesting. Hello. Every, everyone as well. Like when they know that I'm. What about when yours? they know that yeah. I'm vegan, they also they always ask about oh tofu as well. That's like the first thing. <laughs> yeah, he has the more vegan name. So where is where is your nickname came from? Well, celery is pretty damn vegan yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Mine mine actually came from uh, the Pokemon Celebi. Okay. So if you know this oh. Pokemon, like, yeah, let me Google it. I I liked Pokemon a lot. I played the card game, obviously, and 
I thought a cool name at the time was Celebi Master. And then after some time, I thought, okay, this name is a bit weird, maybe. Maybe Celebi, I should translate. Right? With an R? Uh, with a C. C E L E B Y. Okay. Or not Y I. I'll, I'll write it down as well. Celebi. Okay, I see it now. And I decided I should change it a bit. And I ended up on Celery. And then I realized, oh, it's pretty close to the vegetable, actually. <laughs> but lucky for me, I spelled it a bit differently. So it's not literally celery. It's, it's, <laughs> oh, it's not literally celery. Oh, I see. I see. Ah, it's it's, <laughs> it's not just a... missing one L. <laughs> it's still going to still gonna be the vegetable team for, for me for yeah. now. And Sriracha. <laughs> sriracha. Celery and tofu. Yeah. And Sriracha. And Sriracha. Sriracha. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> huh? That's so good. If you want to sponsor us, uh, Sriracha companies. <laughs> actually good idea yeah yeah <laughs> uh, you got a, a funny team i think that yeah as i told you at the beginning of the podcast we really are fun fun boy and you guys because i do like a lot of the fun stuff that you guys put together you know and i think boom is a fantastic player as well uh, i'm gonna give him props we know we talk about uh, tofu and we talk about ace and all that but he's really good and how would you guys came with with boom and how is playing with him um <clears throat> So I've played with Boom for the, the longest time. Mm -hmm. Back in Viking, it was three other players and Boom and me. So Boom and me have been playing for two and a half years now. Um, yeah, He's very interesting. I think he's very stable, usually. He's been improving a lot as well. Like, I think he has like, unlimited potential. <laughs> it's interesting. I saw this clip on the podcast where you talked about Boom. Uh, then boom i think this guy doesn't care much about pubs and probably to his uh, demise but uh, super good in my opinion he's their best player i think he's super super good and i agree if he's if he would care a bit more about pubs that would be very good ah, it's always, you guys it's always the tricky these core players they always <laughs> complain about pubs shut up man like I, I, <laughs> how am i the highest rank i'm playing plus five you guys need to take these pubs a bit more serious there's no complaining man Let's try your best. He's really good, though. He's playing fantastic. It's, it's fun. All of you guys are playing really good. It's, it's, it's been fun. And it's been quite the, the same four teams that made it to the first major, even though there was no major. Yeah. It's the same I team, think it's really funny. You know, <laughs> that are here. Uh, I, guess, I guess it's a nice thing. It feels like justice. We deserve yeah. to go to the first one. Now we all go to the second. Well, whoever is able to go. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, just wait. Uh, Seb has been, he talked about this in different podcasts and we're also coming out with a new episode for the BMW uh, series that we did. And it's funny that Seb talks in the series how he's not been really able to leave Dota, you know? He, he is actually the number one uh, most played pubs on Dota Pro Tracker every week. <laughs> every fucking week. No fucking <laughs> life. What's so fucking ever? No fucking life. What a nerd. What a nerd. The Dota grind, like people don't always know and understand the toxicity and frustration and negativity that even though you're not that type of guy, like there's no way you can avoid it. You you play these pubs, you play with your teammates, you're grinding, you're losing, you're, you're coming to consensus. It's like that to me is like rough sometimes, you know, you do it day in, day out for weeks, you lose your mind slowly. You do it for enough years and yeah, whew, I don't miss it. I miss playing the competitive though, but I, I don't miss the, the grindy part. Yeah. <clears throat> it's always tricky. Sometimes it can feel like when you're winning, it's like you're glad you didn't lose. <laughs> then when, you, yeah. when you lose, it's really rough. Because you sacrifice so much. You sacrifice so much, right? That if you do lose, it's like, fuck, it hurts. It really hurts. Yeah, yeah. I, I can usually, I think I'm pretty good at losing now, or like taking losses. But like, <laughs> can you can you still feel? Uh, can you still feel happiness yeah, yeah. <laughs> and other things? It, it's possible. <laughs> okay, good. good. But like when we when we our last loss, uh, it was rough. Like I usually am pretty calm. I threw my headset. I was, I was super done. <laughs> it it happens. Oh. But yeah. you gotta be able to reset. Like a few minutes after, I'm super fine. Yeah, for me, it's more like I just get emo if 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 my team is toxic or if like. The land days are rough after rough, like rough day after rough day. And, and, you know, people share their emotional pain. And like, 
frustration. I also just at some point get really fed up with it where I, yeah, I stop being fun to be around too, I'm sure. That, that's the things I really don't miss, man, about Dota. Holy smokes. Like, some of these pubs are really cool, though. Like, I've actually had a lot of fun playing some of these pubs. Like, not too many bad vibes. People are playing the game. I do remember it being worse, but I don't know if that's actual memory or, or just, you know, made up fears or something. We always remember the bad ones. That's, yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about pubs in general? How has your pub experience been lately? Uh, lately a bit worse, I think. Overall, I think it's pretty good. Like, I think it's very important to realize that you 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 have to re like tell yourself that you're gonna remember the bad games more than the good ones. Because overall, I would say like only like ten to twenty percent of the games are like someone is very toxic or it's like very annoying, and you can just mute this one person or two people, and it's really not that bad. But what also tends to happen is. Like another thing that's very important to realize is that there's going to be variants in the sense that you cannot just decide today I'm going to play super good and I'm going to win all these games. Like that doesn't work in a team game. You have to try your best. Like I, I have this, I've had this thought for like when I when I went from 7k to 11k in like two years and I realized, okay, I just try my best. If I have 55% win rate, that's pretty good. <laughs> and I, you cannot decide when you're going to win. Then you're going crazy. Like, I would, like yeah. It happens over and over. You trick yourself. You're like, oh, I played. how did I lose this game? I played so good. Uh, this is unbelievable. And then you, yeah. you're just tilting yourself. I mean, there are those games that I see online that they're also very inspiring. It was like Miracle's 9K MMR game back in the day. And now and again, like on, on Dota TV tab, you also see like when there's a very um, imbalanced game that's not really stacked and you have like only one high ranked on one team or and the rest are like ab abysmally different, like rank wise. And like this miracle game, when he got 9K, he had to play fucking perfect. And it was beautiful in his own way. And God knows it wasn't fair that he had to do all these things to, to win that 30 MMR or 25. Um, but those games are still inspiring. And I, I remember also how it feels to have those games where it's like, even though your team is really trash, you're on a good enough hero. If you don't make any mistakes, you can still, you know, win this. And this is when you, I feel like you challenge destiny, you know? This game was supposed to be a minus 25, but you like, you wanted it so fucking bad that you found this one way to get it. And I, I don't know, I like those games. I don't, I don't think there are that many of them, but they're there now and again. It's like some of these storms and tinkers or tiny carries, like they can do it some games. It's like if they don't fuck up once. Yeah, those are the best games for sure. <clears throat> this is where yeah. I cannot take it when core players complain. Come on, man. Like when these unbalanced games, I'm playing some Crystal Maiden and this guy's playing Slark. Like what is yep. what is this game? Yep. 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 And your your moment of shining was like, you know, <laughs> the 15, 20 minutes of first two where you destroyed the whole game. You set everybody up for success. <laughs> and they're like they're gonna lose and they have the audacity to bitch it's like oh no fucking way bro i go first like i need to bitch first so let's just wrap the podcast uh celery absolute pleasure having you here uh again uh we wish you the best of luck against every other team besides ours uh, against us i hope your pc freezes your internet drops your keyboard doesn't work we're gonna need all the I help good dota. <laughs> fine we'll hope for good dota while the keyboard and the mouse uh, nope. doesn't work that, yeah, slight complications. Yes. I wouldn't mind. You know, there's like enough for you not to be able to perform. But no, guys, uh, we love Dota and we love what you guys are doing. And I am actually taking a lot of pride this this uh, season for the European teams that we are sending, you know? Because I think that we're sending really, really good teams, you know? I, I hope that we wreck everybody. Everybody. I want none one of us to lose any games. Me too. So it's going to be rough. We're going to have to play each other at some point. But... Top four. But... Top four Europe. Let's go. <laughs> Top four. That would That's be amazing, possible. dude. I will be like trolling everybody online because every single time I get online and I hear some, uh, I'm gonna get shit on just by saying what I'm about to say, you know? And South America deserves three slots. <laughs> yes, I would love to have South America three slots. I would. I, I really want to, you know? Put three teams together that are good enough to go to a major and let's do it, you know? But come on, like, think about it. Secret is not making it, you know? Nigma is in the second division. And yeah, so. 
maybe we leave to a world, maybe we get to there, you know, where all the regions have a lot of competitive teams. But right now we're not there. Europe is a bloodbath. So, but we have to demonstrate it, you know, we have to go to a major and we have to have us wreck everybody. Because if one of us starts losing to TSM, then fuck, you know, what are we doing? <laughs> Uh, Moon, Moon was here. This is my my job to you for last week. Uh, they're in our group, I think. Uh, we'll try our best. Oh wait, do we have groups already? Uh, groups are released. What who who are you sleeping with, Celery? Uh, podcast. <laughs> wait, why didn't we talk about the groups? Okay. <laughs> do you yeah, have I the groups? Know. Is it is it official or non-official? Yeah, it's official. Okay, tell us oh. the groups. This doesn't come out until wait. Tuesday, so I mean, let's yeah. talk about I'll it. I'll give you the link. Yeah, I don't even. I have never seen. They it. also they tweeted it out as well. Oh, um, oh, it, it was from today. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna ah, say, don't you know that we don't, read, we don't read emails, dude? Come on. Yeah, I was about to join my email. <laughs> Shit. All right, send us the link. Where That's are you sending the link? On Discord. Oh, it's on Discord. Discord. It's okay. also just on Liquipedia. They tweeted oh, it out. Oh, shit. Isn't Group A stronger than Group B? Oh, no. All you right. guys also have Spirit. Uh, okay, so Group I A just, is uh, Biscos, Bed Boom, Bed Boom, Boom, EG, OG. T1 and Tundra, uh, EGOG already together. I would say there's like five good, really strong teams in this group. And in the other one, there's maybe four strong teams, I would say. Fanatic, really, Gaming really Gladiators, strong. Mind Games, Liquid, Spirit, Thunder Awakening, and TSM. I mean, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world because we, we're playing EG, but I still think Group A looks slightly more competitive. Just, again, I, I just like talking shit about America as well. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> we will have to see. I think Dude, it's pretty the, close. They're stuck, eh? Both, the, both groups are stuck. I mean, there's no bad teams anymore. Besides, I guess EG, the difference you know? is there's two teams from Eastern Europe and Group B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mind Games is a pretty big wild card right now, but they did win after all. So yeah, yeah. We'll have to see. And, F and Fnatic won, you know? Fnatic won this year over Boom. And they did, they're actually very, very convincing throughout the whole DPC. Hmm. Oh. I mean, that's also interesting. Like, is Fnatic actually better? Like, we'll have I to see. In Europe, OG also got first. Sometimes the lesser team gets first. <laughs> 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 and with that, we're going to wrap it all. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Dude, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. I will see you in Stockholm and yeah. We'll, I was going to yeah. say I'll buy you a beer, but I don't know if that's a thing. Uh, but yeah, you get <laughs> a buy you five. But it, yeah. <laughs> <We're getting it. laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. And yeah, uh, like, subscribe, and leave us comments about how awful I am and how great they are so we can, you know, keep the algorithm up. <laughs> thank I'll you so there. much, everybody. I'll be doing my part. All right, All right. thank you. <laughs> Cheers.